Hello team, this is episode 14 of Rugby Nation. I'm Sean Maloney, that is Ian Payton. Back in the middle after a long stretch out, Justin Googie Harrison, where you been? What's been happening, Goog? A bit like me really, isn't it? A long stretch. Yeah. Mm. Pregnant snake. Uh, I've been up in the Northern Territory and down through Darwin, Alice Springs, down to Uluru uh, with the Replica 1999 World Cup. Replica. Replica. Right. Uh, I think it's because Bernie, a.k.a. Barney Larkham, tried to scratch his name into it and they had to replace it. <laughs> That's what I think happened. And there was there was some uh, uh, some vision of you and Bernie, speaking of the pregnant snake, hopping into the... Last week, jumping into a tank with this croc. Yeah. Uh, with the croc. Yeah, but Barney, uh, Bernie didn't handle that very well. We've been playing that for a while and he decided to realise he was claustrophobic. And tell us, the secret, column, tell us the secret that um, you shared in a, in a lovely column about how Bernie distracted himself. Bernie decided that he would channel some mind powers and start humming the national anthem. Well, as he got him with the crocodile. Mm, how'd yeah. that work out? Not great, because I started to think <laughs> that's probably going to attract it. Like a, <laughs> some sort of vibrating piece of flesh in a perspex glass in a tank with a 500 kilo crocodile. <laughs> So, yeah, I was busy trying to work out ways to knock Bernie out at that stage to yeah. stop him. Well, you survive. It's good to have you back. Yeah, it's great uh, to be back. And from, from dangerous animals, mammals in the water, mammals, animals, it's whatever, uh, we mammal. go from croc to shark. The sharks went to Canberra last yes. weekend, the South African sharks, and got comprehensively rounded up and put down by the Brumbies in another complete performance from the guys out of Canberra. Let's talk about that to kick things off. Oh, it was a superb performance. I had the great pleasure of covering that game down there. It was zero degrees. Uh, lovely Canberra weather, but gee, they were impressive. You know, like, they've, as we've said, they've got a complete game and they're, and they're putting it on the field. They attacked with great brilliance and great strategy early on. A couple of lovely inside balls. Um, three tries in the first 23 minutes, and then they defended the lights out. It was, you know, the, the Sharks had... Um, I think I counted up at one point in the second half, 15 percent, uh, pardon me, 85 percent possession, um, and the defensive performance of the Brumbies was just outstanding. They didn't let anything through. Yeah, I think I think probably patience is something that you know, you need to start talking about with the Brumbies. And what does that mean and look like in terms of rugby sense and analysing it? Well, it means long periods of defence without a penalty. Mm. It means that you start the game sometimes under extreme pressure, which they have several times throughout the year, and go into half time sometimes down in points, and they come through the game, play a different style, go back to meat and veg more, or start playing expansively, which we know they can do now. Henry Spate now scoring a lot of tries or breaking the line of first phase. Christian Lefano and Powell are mm. starting to dominate the game on performance rather than, than verbal orders. So they're definitely all very comfortable with what they're doing. Well, there's a lot of talk in Canberra about how tight they are. And that, I think, you know, it's kind of, um, you know, chicken or egg, what comes first? A winning team becomes tight, don't you? Uh, but they have a great sense of brotherhood down there. But I, what also impresses me is that they're really well coached, right? So we, we talk about those inside passes. They were both forwards that gave those inside balls so sure that. well <laughs> nothing at all they, they've coached them up the what? skills the skills are uh, they can play they can ball yeah, the yeah they can, can ball throw a things have changed but that, um, that together that's right so but, but they had the skills they yeah. also they had the tactics to have a have a look at that and 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 understand that that's where they were going to find some space early mm. and they found it twice it was probably only going to appear twice and they found it both times um, and then had the wherewithal to finish you know so um, and, and the other thing that jumped out for me is you talk about patience, is that rolling mall, the patience that they apply in that rolling mall, oftentimes it'll get buffeted early and they, they wait until the, the other team has had a good, a good crack at trying to knock it over. They readjust and then go again. So they're the things that jumped out for me. What about some of these guys now that are starting to legit put their hands up as Wallabies contenders. We'll get into their game to come this weekend. But off the back of the performance last week against a decent shark side who, let's not forget, beat the Tars in Sydney, drew with the Crusaders over in Christchurch. So it's a decent side that they've rolled. Who's starting to really come through now? Wallabies squad assembled earlier this week. Who is going to be in there? Who's maybe somebody who's jumping out there, Justin Harrison? Oh, look, you've got it. You can't look past probably the tight five as a unit. You know, we talk about combinations going into World Cups and that's how important things are and consistency. That tight five now have consistently played like a test pack for 
the majority of the super campaign, which is what you look for. With a few standouts, you know, I think you can't really ignore the form that Rory Arnold's in. He's a standout performer at the moment. Uh, yeah. But then you also have a really wonderful um, evolution of a back row happening minus the saviour of Australian Open sides, David mm. Pocock. Mm. Uh, it's, it's, it's been great. Ja Roan Brown, uh, McCaffrey's come through to be a leader. Pete He's Samu has probably had his best game against the Sharks, and unfortunately received an injury. But really, that's that's what you're starting to see now. You're starting to see players appear like test players, and that, I think, across the board is positive. I'm a, I'm a fully signed up member of the Will Genia fan club, but Joey Powell and Christian Leilafano are doing great things at 9 and 10. Um, He's such an underrated footballer, Joey Powell. He just doesn't look like a footballer, right? But, um, you know, week in, week out, he, he puts in a great performance with Christian. You know, they really guide that team. And he's got he's actually got a really good box-kicking game. As, as, you know, as much as we don't want a box-kick, he's got the ability to put a, put a ball on a dime. Um, and then how can you ignore Banks in the form of these guys, like yeah. Banks and Spate and Pulu and Kurundrani? You know, there's, th- this is the great thing about that team. They're all... Banks. I, like, Banks, I like Banks. Speaking of Bryce Banks, away, Banks went well the last time they were over in. Uh, actually, the last two times they've been over in Argentina. That's where we'll bounce across to now. BA Buenos Aires, uh, and that's next. The Juarez, and they will be backing themselves every step away. The Brumbies, good record over there. Just went down earlier this year by five, but that was off the back of a monumental defensive performance against the Stormers, where they ran up 250 odd tackles. So this time around, a little fresher. In a little bit better form, I reckon they're a real good shot, Cook. Yeah, look, it, people talk about travel, right? Let's let's get that out of the way now. The Super Rugby campaign since the dawn of time has had travel involved in it. Players travel business class. Tra- players get programs specifically designed around giving them the best opportunity to perform on the weekend. So let's forget about the travel factor. What's important is exactly what you just said. The lead up to this game is entirely different to what was presented to them last time. All sorts of different um, mental imagery around a finals game, all sorts of different physical preparation coming off a comfortable two week, uh, one week spell leading into the Sharks game at home. So listen, the ball's got to be in the Brumbies court here, except for Hey Glorious, these boys can play. Yeah. They are very good, very patient, very defensive oriented, very powerful. Very similar teams going up against each other in this final. Yep, uh, the travel aspect, the, what you what you say is exactly right. They went to Cape Town, and then basically you're doing a lap around the earth yep. when you do that Spit trip. Around. You, you got to go on to, um, so you're not just doing what you, you got the jet lag of the Africa trip piled on top of the jet lag of the Argentina trip. This time they went the other way and went via Auckland and straight shot to Argentina. So, look, it's still a, a 14, 15 hour journey in a tin can, but. Um, the good thing about the Brumbies is that they don't fear travel. I just love their attitude towards travel. It's like, yep, give it a crack, no dramas. Um, and they've, they're actually a really successful team on the road, certainly in that crossing oceans kind of space. They've won six from their last eight uh, in South Africa, which is you know far and away the best record of an Australian team. And as far as finals go, um, the Brumbies have got it done a couple of times. They won a quarter in 2015 in Cape Town, and they also won a semi in... Pretoria in 2013, if you remember, before they went and played in that final. Yeah, so that. um, that's really good. You know, I know they say that's in the past. You can't, you know, that's a different team, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But as part of the mentality of that club, is there's just no excuses. It travels off the table. What if you just? What if we started an airline called the Plane Class? What do we do? We just have it. It's there's hot and cold. There's massages. It's On the just, plane. Yeah, plane class. Mm. Your idea of a plane class to mine are very different. I've got card tables. Disco balls. <laughs> disco ball. Six bars. Feathers. I've got a gin bar. It's feathers. Whiskey somewhere. bar. Yeah. There are feathers. Bean yeah. bags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you got to stay okay. hydrated. <laughs> a couple of love sacks. <laughs> yeah. Are there any snakes on the plane? <laughs> no, not the, stop not the ones you run away from. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Righto. Uh, so that's the Brumbies up against the Haguares uh, who found themselves in the semi-final, the second to last game of the year uh, after putting away the Chiefs last weekend. That was a close game against the Chiefs. Chiefs pushed them all the way. The Crusaders were way too good for the Highlanders and the Hurricanes snuck home against the Bulls in Wellington. That sets us up with the second semi-final that has the Crusaders up against the Canes. That's, that's, that's juicy.
That's a, that's a mm. delightful little match-up set over there in uh, Christchurch. Well, look what the Canes did to them mm. before. You know, they put they can score and they can play, and they've got they've got, you know, they're probably weakest in forward pack, typical Canes, but they can definitely play the game that will upset the Crusaders. Waikato Chiefs upset them uh, in Fiji, and the Canes play a very similar style of game. Yep. The uh, the thing that I will throw in it may be just a random stat, but since. 2016, when the whole comp. Most you stats know, are random, Pato. <laughs> All six of the semi finals have been won by the home team. Yeah. So um, that's this sort of element of, um, you know, having to play away even if you've got enough points in your quarter final, you know, like the Canes have done and so on. You tend to see teams like still flex their muscles and win that game they should have, but the travel thing accumulates. Yeah. So, but the Canes. Don't have to travel far. They've played two at home, so uh, uh, one at hours, home, and they'll yeah, it's a nice little trip. So, Tops. Um, the only times you see these records being bucked is in New Zealand when yep. or when they come over here. Um, so, yeah, there are there are the travel won't be a factor for them at all. So that'll be Saturday night, or Friday night. Where, which way are we going with the first game? Saturday, Saturday night. night. It's Saturday, it's Saturday, Saturday morning. morning. Brunch, Saturday night. Saturday night. Nine a.m. Nine a.m. on your on your door. Just yep. roll your eye a little more and just soften the G. Oh, yeah, okay. It's almost no G in there. Did you ever um, play, did you ever have to travel for, to yeah. South Africa for a, any sort of finals with the Brums? Or you guys hosted mostly when you were playing? Yeah, we just, we just just finished on top. Roll up. <laughs> <laughs> we had home finals. Welcome to my house. Yeah. <laughs> Wake didn't up at four in the afternoon. <laughs> didn't get out, of, didn't even yeah. get out of bed unless it was a home final. <laughs> Oh, too good. All right, so that's what's to come this weekend in the world of Super Rugby. Let's backtrack now to Sunday morning, Aussie time, where the Aussie 20 side went down by just a solitary point against Le Bleu, the French. They defend their title as the world champions Mm. in the world of 20s, uh, but just a terrific campaign from the get-go, from the green and gold. Yeah, right right across the board, a great... A great... um let, let you know vindication probably first of the fortitude to give under 20s priority over super rugby depending on minutes right let's not confuse that if mm. blokes met a threshold they stayed in the super rugby team of which they were signed so we weren't uh, inhibiting professional career progression but most importantly keeping those combinations together and giving what probably was a group of fellas that played together a lot at schoolboy level mm. a chance to continue that dichotomy and, and environment through together in other 20s. You talk about closest of teams that, that spring up in provincial rugby. Playing representative rugby together as well has an amazing galvanising effect and you could see it in that under 20s group. Yeah, well a lot of those guys had, had played 20s last year but it was supplemented by um, a lot of the fellas in that came out of that under 19s tournament. We've mm-hmm. talked about it. They changed yeah. the way that things went, and that was a, a bang on smart move um, because you had existing combinations. Same with a few of those uh, 18s boys, even that, that came up in, into that squad. So um, time together just proved to be a real key for that. And they, and again, this is a team they've they've talked about it since about how tight they've become and how um, you know. And again, we've spoken about this a number of times. These. Uh, that campaign, maybe we haven't seen the full fruit of that yet. The, 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 the yeah, train. exactly. These yeah. are the guys who are. Next uh, one, uh, Righto, let's go through some of the guys who were heading up that run over in Argentina. Uh, Pat, I'll let you highlight your man of the series for the Aussies. And then we get uh, the yeah, well, I'm going to go with Harry Wilson, the, the f- uh, flanker from Just Queensland, from brother's up. flanker, who... Um, just a, a great workhorse. Wasn't probably the flashiest of players, but you know, big things to come from him. I reckon we'll see him in a Reds jersey next year. Plays with number eight as well, doesn't he? A little bit, yeah. I think guess is one. <laughs> what do you got? Uh, well, look, would never have done it when I was playing, because you know, it's just com- competitive advantage. Yes. But now that I'm on the greener pasture, clearly, number four, Michael Wood. Um, very, very good performance. What was probably most pleasing about him was the fact that he didn't show up any highlights pictures which means he's first into ruck last out of ruck woody he woody yeah. woody yeah he sort of pulled ripped the cord and let him go he played started second row contracted with the reds so he can get up there and 
Is Woody the man that I read up at rugby.com.au article where he just eats like an absolute machine? Like yeah. this guy's a three dinner kind of a guy. Yeah. yeah good. So when when you're having an aperitif, I'm a six beer kind of guy. So yeah, we should probably get together. You guys would be a terrific combination. Yeah. Big bill, but a good combination. Yeah. Uh, he's doubling up dinners. He's putting away a barbecue yeah, chicken well, they and said, out yeah. for five hundred. Well, they four. said and that Tomahawk. dinner was at six p.m. Team dinner was at six p.m. So we ordered yeah, at five. I can tell yeah. you. And then the, came home and had a bit more dinner. Just a for When I signed, when I signed with the Brumbies in 96 so it was this height and 101 kilos so I was, I was basically a single use plastic straw and uh, he uh, Ewan McKenzie pulled me aside and said cook mate I don't care what you eat just eat McDonald's Pizza Hut chickens anything you can get your hands on eat it so I did I ate about six or seven times a day all junk food yeah uh, and the next year I came in weighing 106 kilos and my skin folds had doubled. <laughs> I like that you Pat, put on the necessary <laughs> weight but you don't have kidney and liver yeah, fat. Paddy right. Howard said to me, mate, you're the skinniest fat bloke I've ever seen. <laughs> so and, that was good. And, and you got probably, paid for it. And probably two or three clog day orders. We to free up at some stage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's, what's that fellow? Uh, Furlock, Mer Morgan Furlock or whatever. They yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Spurlock, yeah. Super, so, super size me. Yeah, you did, I was you, way ahead of him. You took, yeah. That and player rotation I got suspended regularly and I ate junk food I mean, I'm first of yeah, across it. Uh, um, okay so uh, back here at home also big news on the national front with Sean Byrne being announced as the Wallabies attack coach Byrne formerly with uh, with the Melbourne Rebels or still with the Melbourne Rebels but takes up that role alongside Force before that uh, he's Force. been around has, has Byrne up, been overseas done his thing over there round with great won games for the Waratahs. I'm um, looking forward to seeing what sort of polish he can put on those guys. Yeah, well, I mean, he, besides polishing his four false teeth that he's got, he's still, <laughs> still, I just think they're still at the wreck in Bath. One um, of the world's great broken noses. One of, the great, yeah. one of the great blokes never to be voted Bachelor of the Year. Um, but he but did try on that he, front. Yeah, he, he did. We've got to go through this story. We have to touch on it because it's been published so many times before. Yeah, it has. Can you condense it to like a two-minute version? Yeah, I can give it to you basically starting with Stephen Hoyles organised to have um, a letter, formal letter sent to Sean Byrne informing him that he'd been selected to be a contestant in Bachelor uh, of the Year. Cle Cleo, Cleo, Cleo yeah, Bachelor yeah. of the Year Award. Can you come down in the morning, tomorrow morning, uh, and present yourself for a photo shoot? So had a professional photographer in a change room, put him in all sorts of horrible kit and got his little pasty white stanky overachieving physique in these very uncomfortable poses. He was in like car keys. <laughs> yeah. Car keys. He, had a, like he had a cowboy suit Steve on. Steve Irwin <laughs> tuxedo, safari thing. He was holding he a like teddy bear. Dumbbells that point, were too heavy so yeah. he was winching <laughs> and um, and then so took about 120 photos and never saw the light of day again. Berner was reassured that it would be airbrushed, some abs in, possibly a completely different head as well. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so then a couple of weeks down the track, we're sitting before an Otago Highlanders match with Tarsby Highlanders in Dunedin. Ewan McKenzie gets up. Things are going well, 05, we're on the way to the finals. If we get this game, we're getting a home final, happy days. I'm a bit worried about the mental fortitude of the team when I start seeing things like this. and. Push, push this click on the <laughs> cute PowerPoint, cute, cute photos, and cute Sean Byrne disappearing up his own backside. Uh, yeah, one of the great stitches, which then kicked off one of the great running battles known to man between Hoyles and Sean. In Byrne. terms of pranks, the pranks. Final, what, came, what was his payback? Well, the best. Well, the the, ret the retort was a was a full nativity scene set up in the living room of Stephen Hoyles' house. He created house. a full beach, didn't he? Had two yeah, tons really? of sand dumped yeah. inside Hoyles' lounge. Well done, pump, well done, pump, very pump, good. Pump, pump. Complete with pool, palm yeah. trees. Yeah, but the icing was the was, icing was, was was the Godfather style. The, the pig's head. There was a pig's head placed in a bed and ruined ruined some linen and then and the um, lovely Lara Hoyles said yeah, the GM, Lou said no more the enough. GM of the, that's of the enough family. ladies great, yeah great ladies and gentlemen line. your new Wallabies backscape yeah he'll go well <laughs> way to go <laughs> um, all right so from Wallabies to the Wallaroos they've got their upcoming two test. Uh, they're fr we don't. Oh, you can't call them friendlies. We never call them friendlies. It's just a two test showcase. Test matches, yeah. Two test showcase. Show two test, test series. Two test test series. Yep. Uh, against Japan coming up, and uh, Grace Hamilton, one of my favourite players in the game, uh, has been named skipper as well. Yeah, New skipper, great. yeah. Eleven debutants in that squad, uh, including one of your favourites, Sean Alicia Lafau Fakoa Saleya, yeah. who yeah. Um, 
you'll remember well from the tens when Brisbane you tens. really jumped out of your skin. Oh, she you almost, she almost, she almost literally rearranged something into two pieces and then scooped the ball up, ran thirty yep. metres away to score. She is ridiculously talented and yeah, has yeah, only got better from that point. Yeah, yeah, super. Had to had to sit out a, a period of eligibility from, mm-hmm. uh, from raised in New Zealand, but um, now firmly a Queenslander. So she'll be outstanding. You can imagine she'd come straight into that squad. Lots of other good talent there. Uh, amazingly, though, um, more Queenslanders than New South Wales girls in that team. Despite, despite New South Wales staying unbeaten, unbeaten to use their so own Super W. Uh, the coach must see something that... Which know, means they've had a thought about the squad composition and combinations. Well, please I don't get too serious. He knows, he knows what he's he does. Doing. And also, doing. don't forget you can buy Wallaroos gear. Oh, you the can first too. Time. Official yeah. Wallaroos yeah. kit, which is pretty cool. On the, uh, the Wallaby shop slash Wallaroos shop. Super. That's great. Go yes. and look that up. Uh, so you they, probably they, what? Get one on. <laughs> I'm just going to let them sit there for a little bit as I prep up the next little uh, little bit. Uh, Daryl Gibson. We're going to bounce back to Super W, uh, Super W, Super Rugby rather. Daryl Gibson, New South Wales mm. Waratahs are in the market for a new coach. They are. Simon Cron's not hanging around and Gibbo's gone. Yeah, a bit of a shock uh, in some ways. He was on contract for next year. He signed... A confusing contract, but he basically had a one and one extension last year. He, he coached the first year, which was this year, and he'd indicated he was going to take up that second year, but has changed his mind. Um, pitched it as that he had had a look at the way that the squad was developing for next year, a lot of senior guys moving on, a lot of these young guys that we've mentioned coming through. He felt like there's a three or four year cycle starting, and he'd be stealing. Uh, one year off the new coach, um, if that was his words, if he stayed. So, um, look, Daryl Gibson's one of the, the great humans of, of rugby. So um, you take taking him his, his word there, and, and I genuinely think that um, he had the best of intentions in trying to do the right thing by the joint. So um, a, a 42% win record overall, not the greatest, but he had some, some tough, um, some headwinds, I guess you'd say. He, he took over from Michael Checker. When that joint got gutted, Czech took half the staff, the CEO left, there was a rebuild to do. So um, semi-final appearance in 18 was was the high point. This year was a disappointing season. Um, they, they should have made the finals, no doubt. But um, yeah, overall, um, you know, a, a good man and we wish him well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nations Championship, we're going to wrap up with that. That has been thrown into the rubbish bin. That was the proposed format to have eight teams uh, duke it out towards the back end of the year, and it's four ten teams. Head. Ten, ten teams, teams yeah. Sorry. Yep. Um, personally, I like. Pardon the me. Twelve. It was six was it from six, six from the south. Six. Let's just keep going. Fourteen. No, sure. twelve. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Six from from down here, and six the six nations teams, obviously. Yeah. Um, billions and billions. Well, the, the the word out of the north was that the Scots and the Irish voted it down. They weren't in favour of promotion relegation. Um, and it needed everyone on board. So uh, disappointing because that was a, it's a good opportunity to try and get the Fijis of the world and the Japans in the world a bit more regular competition. More um, and, and that could still happen. I think that we're talking now about changing the rugby championship. And to be honest, that it has to happen, doesn't it? You know, like we're we're getting a bit stale in that in that space. I would have thought. Oh, I just look. I just think. You know, someone's going to arrive at the number that's going to convince the other people that aren't so convinced. You reckon? You know, How yeah, much more though? They, the initial figure that was being banned about was huge. Yeah, well, it's probably not huge enough for the Northern Hemisphere boys that think they've got a mortgage on rugby. Oh, mm. they're never going to get relegated though. That was the thing. They're never going to go down in that situation. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Irish, think so. Scotland, like Scotland are, Scotland are improved. Maybe. Their twenties got relegated out of the. Yeah. Which, World which, Champions. which probably leads you to believe that. They've announced that they weren't comfortable with relegation, but they weren't comfortable really with the vehicle so that it had the number on it. You think so? Probably. A bit more, a few more euros there required. You hear it here first. Okay, uh, fellas, that's that's us. This is a straight shot all the way through. No hiccups. It's great to have you back, Justin Harris. Good to be Lovely back. to have you on deck, uh, Pato. You too. This week, we turn our attention to the Brumbies and the Haguaros. First thing, Saturday morning, get your Nespresso's ready. Get ready to sink your teeth into what should be a humdinger over there in Haguaro land. Later that night is the Crusaders and Hurricanes going at it. And we'll see you all again next week right here on Rugby Nation. Rugby Nation.